What is up guys, Joe Holland here. I have a pretty exciting episode here for you today. I am in Northern Maine, heading into a remote pond. I'm on the logging roads right now. I got a tip that there's a possibility that there's crappy up here, a couple hours north of Bangor, which I don't know if I believe. I found a route in through the Google and I'm gonna go as far in as I can with the truck, then I'm gonna switch over to the snowmobile and go in, hopefully there's ice, there should be ice because I'm further north than I was this last week when I had five inches of ice. So I'm hoping there's enough ice to hold the snowmobile, I'm hoping there's enough ice to hold me and I'm gonna camp on the ice and I am on the search this year for a crappy over 18 inches. I'm not gonna devote the entire year to it, but if I have day trips, if I have a couple trips open where I could just run out for a couple days, I'm going after something 18 inch or plus. I know they live in Maine, they're out there and it would be something else to get one over 18 inches. What I love are tiny little ponds that the crappie becomes the dominant fish in there. Crappie, crappie, black crappie, crappie, specks, speckled perch, perch, dot, slabs, fry pan, dinner plates, megas. They got all the names in the books for them. I call them crappies, I'm probably way off. That's how we call them in the north. They're actually really not even known up here yet. Small little remote pond in the middle of the woods in logging country. I have no idea what's in there. Somebody said that there could be bass in there, which I'm guessing would be smallmouth bass because I don't think there's any largemouth that live this far north. Could be native brook trout in here. Probably native pickerel and yellow perch as well. Would be cool if there's some white perch too. No idea what's in here, no idea what there is for ice. Excited to be here, excited to be on my first camping trip of the season. Hopefully I don't forget too much stuff and hopefully I get set up pretty quick. Thanks for tuning in guys. Hope you enjoy the show as much as I'm gonna enjoy filming it. All right, we got some weather coming in for sure and some pretty high winds the next couple days. So I'm gonna get this thing zipped down as quick as I can with the anchors. And I'm either gonna, I'm even gonna run the anchors off the sides. Oh, 
All right, we are all set up. I'd say that was pretty quick. Maybe 10 or 15 minutes and I got the whole thing set up, ready to go, ready to sleep, ready to cook, ready for just about everything. Let's take a look. Table, cook stove, buddy heater with the hose going outside to a propane tank. Brought a Milwaukee light this year. We're gonna try that out. Cot sled up, set up with a big sleeping pad under it. Sleeping bag there, got my chair here clothes and various batteries and then all the camera and recording stuff there and that's about it i got a couple coat hangers in the bottom of that bag i'll get out and and get a couple of these jackets hung up and out of the way and uh that's it so i'm gonna leave this just the way it is right now shut the door and if there's enough sunlight out there this place will get pretty warm and i'm gonna go poke a couple holes see if there's any fish here quick change of plans with my lifelong distrust for politicians and weathermen the weatherman said we're supposed to get like a dusting tomorrow maybe a little bit of snow and then on my ride up here i noticed the switch to like six inches and once you get a couple hours north of bangor i just i've seen what they call six or seven inches before turn into 48 inches in one storm they called for seven inches turn into 48 24 hours so i just don't trust it so i'm pretty far in on this logging road I'm close to the pond now, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I loaded up the snowmobile. I'm gonna take it back out all the way, maybe seven or eight miles to close to the end of that logging road where I think they might get a plow to just in case we get more snow and then I'll take the snowmobile in. I got like four or five inches of snow right now. So shouldn't be a problem. That way, just in case we get a ton of snow, my truck isn't stuck in here for the rest of the winter. You know, I'd much rather be fishing right now, but it's a smarter move with a little bit of age as I'm trying to come upon a little bit of wisdom. There's pros and cons to bringing the truck all the way back out. You know, it's a very, very, very long walk out if the snowmobile breaks down or if I can't get the snowmobile running when I'm in there or if I get injured, I'm further away from the truck. But if it dumps on us like it possibly can, because I've said it once, I'll say it probably another time too, but these mountains up here, they make their own weather. So if the weatherman's calling for four to six, you're pretty much want to multiply those together and expect 24. You know, if they call for eight to 10, go ahead and multiply them. It could be 80 inches. That's just how it is up here. So hated losing that hour to do that but i think it was the right move only time will tell and you know when you're up here in situations like we're in right now it's always better safe than sorry i got maybe a half hour of light right now left and it is killing me not knowing if there's crappy in here or not i cannot believe johnny crappy seed made his way all the way up here but if it's true if it's true I'm gonna be so happy and so amazed to get into one. And there's a chance, you know, with a first generation crappy in this pond that he's really big. Let's hope they're in here. If not, I will be fishing for perch or bass or uh, trout or whatever the heck's in here. I have no idea on the depth. It looks like there could be some depth because of the contour. You know, over there, there's a nice high bank, a good ridge over here. It's kind of lowland, so. It probably is a little deeper on that side. I'm going to go out in the middle, poke a hole, take the Garmin and a jig rod and see if anything shows up. Let's hope. Fingers crossed, y'all. Y'all. I could say that now that I'm a crappy fisherman. That's amazing. Whew, good catch. I should have chucked that in a little harder. Not very deep there. Looks like a harder sandy bottom. Normally I start dead center of the lake. I guess I'm center this way, but I'm not center that way. It's it should be deeper over there. It looks like more of a bowl. I'm gonna drop this down. It's gonna make some noise. See if anything comes over and checks it out. Oh, it's a crappy. 
Oh my god, they're in here. They are in here. <laughs> Holy cow, guys. Johnny Crappy Seed has made his way way up here in northern Maine. Look at how pretty that one is. The screen's lit up with these guys, all about that size. They're in here. We got a chance. We got a chance. That's a little better. All right. So I got a school down there. They're pretty fired up. They're not easy to catch though. But that guy came, came in and ate it pretty good. I'm going to move around till I find some deeper water or bigger fish. Kind of pretty, aren't they? All right, that's it for today. I'm shocked there's crappy in here. That's awesome. I drilled like 10 holes around the pond and found the deepest hole so far was only 11. And the shallowest out near the middle was nine. And everywhere I drilled, there were crappy on the screen. And they were maybe five to eight inches. I caught like five or six of them. They're really pretty fish here. But I don't know. I don't know. I'm hoping there's still some big ones here. I'm hoping there's like a first class of fish in here. And, uh, we'll know more tomorrow. I got shiners. I got a bucket of shiners over there, man. And we're going to put those out tomorrow. See if we can catch some fish with those. And... I'm going to bounce around and do some jigging too. I just got that thing running. I've been fighting that thing for like the last half hour. For some reason, it's been like spitting and kicking out and then shutting off and then spitting again. I went out and messed with the nozzle and shook the can. And I don't know if I had some bad propane or bad propane in the line or what. Seems to be running right now. Otherwise, it's going to be a really cold night if that spits out again. I'm prepared for it if it isn't on. So it's not a big deal. I got the Milwaukee Tower of Power, a big light there. I could angle it this way and get a little bit, little bit more light over here if I want. But it seems to be pretty bright in here. So right now I'm set up. I'm thinking about dinner. I'm going to try out the new Coleman Hyper Flame. Probably unpack and get some dry socks on and some, some warmer clothes and try to put a game plan together for tomorrow. What I'm thinking is to try to cover as much of the lake as I can to at least find where the deepest holes are, set four traps, maybe move those around with some live bait on it and just jump around with a live scope and, and see if I could find some big fish out there. I'm not 100% sure what's in here. I do know there's crappy in here now, which is really cool because I was not sure there was or there were or there are crappy in here. And we'll figure out what we're going to have for dinner tonight. It is already pretty cold. It is 17 degrees and dropping. It was a high of 26 today. And it's been dropping pretty fast the last 20 minutes. So I know we got a pretty good storm system moving in tomorrow. It looks like it's going to be a, a quarter. It could drop as much as 12 inches on us or it could be rain, sleet and rain. I hope it's not rain. These tents aren't really made for rain or for the sleet. They can handle, you know, freezing rain or, or a little bit of sleet, but they're not really made for it and not really made for snow either if you have the heat on in here. Alrighty, that big buddy heater is fired up now, running good, running smooth. So I don't know what it was, if I had like a air pocket in the hose or, or something, but it wasn't running really good at all. It kept shutting out. So a little worrisome when you're, when you're looking at zero degrees or less tomorrow night and maybe single digits tonight. Dinner tonight is going to be one of my favorite road meals. I have a couple packs of deer burger left from a deer I shot, not this year, but the year before. I did not get a deer this year. We know what happens to guys ice fishing who didn't get their deer this year is they end up eating hot dogs. <laughs> if, if you see a guy eating hot dogs, more than likely he did not get a deer. Probably tomorrow night we're going to have some of these old Lewiston lobsters, these red snappers, drive a couple of them into me. But tonight... We're getting some brown gravy. We're getting poblano peppers and onions. Gonna grill those up in the, or fry those up in the pan with some olive oil, if that olive oil thaws out. And then we're gonna throw a little brown gravy in there and throw that burger in there and saute it up. And man, does that go down good. I don't know what it's called, if there's a name for it, but I call it good. And I still have some okra left. It, it, it froze, but I don't know. You're not supposed to really freeze okra like that, but. I probably ought to eat that before it gets too slimy. So we're going to have okra tonight for some greens and drive a really good meal into me. The ice is snapping, cracking, and I think it's getting thicker tonight already. So it's making a lot of noise, which is a really 
cool comforting sound i know when you're sleeping on it if it moves you know if you get that little buckle that's not the best feeling but just hearing it pop and and it hasn't been crazy loud but it's almost like a living breathing thing that's just really kind of soothing let's see if we could hear it there we go a little bit bigger yes sir that's a good crappy right there all right Not bad. Ooh, there's a good one. That's just one, that's just what we're after. Is that bass? What is this? Whoa, it's a slab! Nice! Nice! That is a slap. 